In this tutorial, you will learn how to create the split and grow effect in Premiere Pro and Photoshop. The first thing we need to do is to create a new sequence from our clip. Make a right click, new sequence from clip. Make sure the timeline cursor is at the beginning of the sequence. Right click your clip and add a frame hold. Now we need to bring this frame to Photoshop. To do this, you can use the export frame button or the shortcut Shift E. Choose a good name. I will go with Skyline. As format, choose PNG and remember the path where it will be saved or choose your own path. Then click OK. Open the frame you just saved in Photoshop and now it's time to do some masking. The first step is to select the layer, create a duplicate of it with Command J on your keyboard. For this tutorial, I want to animate the center part of the skyline. So everything that's in the selection right now, I want to animate. In the first step, I need to remove all of the buildings and create a clean background. To do this, I will use the lasso tool and create a rough selection of the skyline. While I do this, I make sure there's some room left around the building buildings, but also to include every single part of the buildings, like the antennas and so on. Once you finish going around in the sky area, when it comes to the bottom part of the selection, where you actually see more details of the building, it's better to be a little bit more precise when masking. I'm still doing this quite fast here, so you don't have to watch me masking for too long. But in general, the more detailed your selection is, the cleaner the animation will look like in the end. Once finished, you should have a selection including all of the buildings you want to animate. Now go to Select, Inverse and create another duplicate of this layer by using the Command and J shortcut. This will create a new layer with the skyline removed. Rename this layer Mask, create another copy of this layer with Command J and rename this one Clean. What we want to do here is to fill this empty area with Generator Fill. To select it, hold Command on your keyboard and click the layer to create a selection. Go to Select Inverse to only select the middle part. Click Generate a Fill. You can leave the prompt empty as Photoshop is quite good at generating sky and skylines. Click Generate and wait a couple of seconds until Photoshop gives you three image options. Photoshop fill the empty area with three different options. I think I will go with the first one. Before we proceed, we need to combine these two layers, select the generator fill and the clean layer, right click and merge layers or use Command E and rename again to clean. Now we have a mask layer without all of the buildings we want to animate and one clean layer where we have everything that was behind the buildings replaced by generator fill. The next step is to create selections of the building. Bring back our first layer where everything is visible and start creating selections of the buildings. You can use any tool you like. I will go with the lasso tool for this one as all of the buildings have quite good straight lines. I keep it quite narrow on the sides but do a rough selection on the top parts just to speed this up for the tutorial. But as before, the cleaner your selection is, the better your animation will look in the end. So keep following the corner of the building. On the bottom part, you don't have to match the exact corner of the building. You can go a little bit lower because this part will not be visible later on as we will have the clean foreground layer covering this. Once you've selected the building, make sure the layer with all the buildings is selected and with Command J create another new copy. This will create a new layer which will just contain the building you just masked. To keep everything organized, I recommend renaming the layers. So I will put in B1 for this one. Go back to the main layer, make it visible again where we can see all of our building. Go over to the next building. Use the lasso tool and start creating a selection of the building. As before, you don't have to work precise on the bottom part as you won't be seeing this later on but the top part should be pretty clean. Building is selected, make sure you select the right layer, Command J and create a new copy of this layer for the second building. Don't forget to rename it to stay organized and go on with the next building. I will just fast forward this for you. In the end you should end up with a couple of layers, each one of them containing one of the buildings as well as one mask layer where the skyline is removed and one clean background layer where you fill the mask. Now we need to bring all of those layers back to Premiere. Go to File, Export and Layers to Files. Remove the file name prefix as we don't need that. Make sure visible layers only is not selected. As file type use PNG and make sure transparency is selected. Then click Run. Once Photoshop has finished, it will give you this prompt. Click OK and go back to Premiere. Here you need to import all of those layers. Remember where you save them. Select all of them and click Import. Now the first two layers we want to add to our sequence are the clean layer, which will be our background in the end. Give it 
it a different color so you can see it better later on. I'm gonna make it red and the mask layer, which I will put on top, but I will leave one layer empty between the clean layer and the mask layer. And I will also give the mask layer a different color just for you to make it easier to see. We can hide the first layer for now. And as you can see, we have the mask layer with the background removed and the clean background layer where we have the mask filled. Now we need to bring in the buildings again, select the first one, B1, PNG, and place it in between the mask and the clean background layer. You see the right building of the scanner is visible again. Now I zoom in here on the timeline a little bit more. Here we have to decide how long our animation should be. I will go with 15 frames, so about half a second. Select the B1, so the first building layer, go to effect control and set a keyframe for position. So this is the keyframe for the animation end when all the buildings are in their final position. Move the playhead to the beginning of the clip and use the position of the building to move it down so it hides behind our foreground layer. When I play this back, the building slowly appears in its original position and our first building is animated. To make the movement a little bit more realistic, you can select both of the position keyframes, right click, temporal interpolation and easy in, or use custom timings by expanding the position keyframes, make the graph visible and play around with those handles. I usually use something like this. So a fast beginning and slow ending pops up fast and then slowly goes to its final position. This was our first build. Now we have to repeat the step for all of the others. Move the mask layer, the green one, one up so we have a gap in between and bring in our second building, which is the small one. As we already animated our first building, we can use the keyframes from this one, from the position, select them, copy them, go back to our second building, set a keyframe for the position, and then just paste the keyframes from our first building. You see the first two buildings pop up. Let's bring in the next one, move our mask one up, bring in building number three. Now you always have to take a look if buildings are in the foreground or background. One we already animated is in front of the new one, and the new one kind of covers this one. So we have to change the position of these two. Move the mask layer one up again and put B2 in front of B3. This way we make sure it pops up in front of the other building. And as you can still see, if you zoom in here, when we move the second building, there's still in this area some part of the building visible which is not yet in the frame. Set a keyframe for the position of the new building and paste the position keyframes. Zoom out here. And as you can see, three buildings pop up now. Let's drag those two down here again. Bring in our next building, B4, which is this large one. Same as before, set a position keyframe and copy paste them. Here you can see because it's such a tall building, it's not hiding at the beginning. In this case, we have to adapt the keyframe and move the building even lower until it's behind the foreground layer. Move the mask up, bring in building number five, which is the small white one. Go to the beginning of the animation, set a position keyframe, paste them. Next building moves up. Let me just do this for all of them. Once finished, all of the buildings appear in their final position again. To make this animation more realistic, we need to change the keyframes a bit. So we go to our frame number 15, where the animation should end. And now for each layer, we start to adjust the end keyframe and start keyframe a bit. This means each building starts moving and ends moving at a different time and at different speeds. So you can choose both keyframes, push them back a little bit, or put each one closer to another, or just move the end keyframe so the building is in its final position a bit earlier. Do this for all of the keyframes you created for your animation. This already looks a lot nicer because all of the buildings move at different speeds. Once you change all the keyframes, you see this animation already looks a lot more realistic because all of the buildings move at different speeds. There's one last thing we need to fix because some of the layers don't show up in the right order. As you can see, some of the movement looks a little bit weird because there are two buildings in another moving. Let's find out which one we need to change. Building six, the big white one, and one of the buildings that's behind it. So six and eight, we need to change the position of the layer. Bring this one to the right, move building six up, bring this one back in. Building six grows behind building number seven and it looks a lot more realistic. When doing this, the layers on the top should be the foreground buildings and the layers on the bottom should be the background buildings. Now to make it look even more realistic, we can add some motion blur to the moving parts. Go to effects and look for directional blur. Double click to apply it to the first building layer. 
scroll down so you can see the effect. And you have two options here, direction and blur length. Leave direction as it is, but with your player at the beginning of the sequence, set a keyframe for blur length at something like 20. Check where the movement of the splitting ends, right here at the second keyframe. For directional blur, set another one and change the value to zero. As before, you should create easy ease keyframes or something else. I will go with easy in here. Now you have some nice motion blur on the building as you can see when it pops up here. Just zoom in, see the right building has some motion blur applied to it. Same as before, you have to apply this effect now to all of the layers. Just select the directional blur effect from the first layer, copy it, go to the next layer, make sure the plate is at the beginning, paste, match the position of the blur and position keyframe and repeat this process for all layers. There's one last thing we can do to make it even more realistic. To do this, go to our project panel and create another new sequence from our animation sequence. So right click, new sequence from clip, create a new adjustment layer, new adjustment layer, settings will be automatically applied. Click OK, place this layer above your animation, then go to effects and apply directional blur to this layer as well. Change the blur length to 20, Zoom in on your sequence and with your adjustment layer selected, move one frame forward, command K to cut it, move another frame, command K again, move another frame, command K again and keep doing this for the whole length of the animation. Remove every other frame, this means select one of the slices, remove, 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 keep on going and also the last large chunk. This will add some camera shake to your animation which will make it look even more realistic. This tutorial covers the basics of this effect. You can also apply it to a single building to animate it in different steps or to a moving video like a hyperlapse. I hope you learned something new in this video. Make sure to share it with someone who should try the effect and also subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.